In 1964, Seven Days in May emerged as a gripping political thriller that delves into the tension-laden realms of power, loyalty, and the precarious balance between democracy and authoritarianism. Directed by John Frankenheimer, this film explores a hypothetical scenario where a military coup attempts to overthrow the United States government. As you revisit this cinematic classic, consider the intricacies of the characters and their roles. Out of the many performances, which one resonated with you the most? The narrative unfolds against the backdrop of Cold War anxieties, offering a thought-provoking exploration of the complexities inherent in political decision-making. As you reflect on the film, is there a particular scene or moment that etched a lasting impact on your perspective? The film's relevance extends beyond its era, prompting viewers to examine the dynamics of power and the resilience of democratic institutions. Now, we invite you to share your most cherished memory or personal experience related to Seven Days in May. Did the film spark conversations, illuminate a new perspective, or perhaps become a memorable part of your cinematic journey? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. And now, let's unravel some random facts about this cinematic gem. Did you know that the screenplay was penned by Rod Serling, renowned for his work on The Twilight Zone? Serling's distinctive touch adds layers of tension and nuance to the plot, enhancing the film's impact. As you revisit Seven Days in May, consider these insights and share your thoughts with fellow enthusiasts below. Your perspective adds depth to the cinematic tapestry. It's your turn to be the storyteller. In the 1964 movie Seven Days in May, Burt Lancaster initially hesitated to play the role of Scott, a character perceived as vilifying the conservative Republican Party. However, Kirk Douglas convinced him that Scott was a morally ambiguous figure, not a straightforward villain. This insight into the actor's perspective adds a layer of complexity to the film's portrayal of political dynamics. Director John Frankenheimer's choice of the Colt M16 as a futuristic rifle for the military in the film holds significance beyond the narrative. The M16S selection marked its emergence as a replacement for the aging and heavy M14 in real-world military service. This decision not only served the movie's futuristic setting but also inadvertently influenced military armament. The on-screen partnership of Burt Lancaster and Kirk Douglas, spanning seven films, is clouded with debate about the nature of their relationship. Despite disputes, director John Frankenheimer asserted that they were friends. Still, he acknowledged the strain in their working relationship, citing Kirk Douglas' alleged jealousy and Burt Lancaster's legendary ego as contributing factors. In delving into the behind-the-scenes dynamics of Seven Days in May, these facets of the actor's perspectives and the director's choices provide a nuanced understanding of the film's production. The interplay of political themes, futuristic elements, and the real-world impact of weapon selection adds layers to the movie's significance in both cinematic and historical contexts. In the making of the 1964 movie Seven Days in May, an intriguing anecdote adds a layer of presidential endorsement. Kirk Douglas, after a dinner with President John F. Kennedy, revealed his plan to adapt the novel into a film. Kennedy, expressing enthusiasm, spent the next half hour endorsing the potential greatness of such a cinematic venture. This presidential nod not only highlighted the relevance of the story, but also foreshadowed its impact. The film, set in the not-too-distant future, subtly incorporated futuristic elements that reflected the era's perception of advanced technology. The inclusion of a wall-projecting slide viewer, television-based teleconference equipment, and a digital time date display at the Pentagon aimed to depict a high-tech environment of the near future, offering a unique lens into the technological aspirations of the time. A noteworthy aspect of the movie's production lies in director John Frankenheimer's personal background. Having served in the Air Force, he brought an intimate familiarity with the Pentagon to the project. This insider perspective likely contributed to the film's authentic portrayal of military and political settings, adding a layer of realism that might have otherwise been overlooked. These behind-the-scenes insights into the presidential endorsement, futuristic vision, and directorial experience provide a compelling backdrop to the production of Seven Days in May. They illuminate the convergence of political intrigue, technological foresight, and military realism in a film that continues to resonate in both cinematic and historical contexts. 
The ensemble cast of the 1964 movie Seven Days in May boasts an impressive lineup, featuring five Oscar winners, Burt Lancaster, Edmund O'Brien, Martin Balsam, Frederick March, and John Houseman. Additionally, three Oscar nominees, namely Ava Gardner, Kirk Douglas, and Ferris Webster, contribute to the film's star-studded roster. This collection of acclaimed talent adds depth to the cinematic experience, bringing together a group of industry-recognized performers. Interestingly, Seven Days in May holds a unique distinction in its release history. The movie never saw the light of day in Brazil, a consequence of the military coup d'etat that took place on April 1, 1964. The generals orchestrating the overthrow viewed the film as uncomfortably parallel to their real-life actions, leading to a ban on its release in Brazil. The government's decision reflected the perceived resonance between the movie's narrative and the unfolding political events, underscoring the powerful impact cinema can have on societal perceptions. As the second installment in John Frankenheimer's Paranoid Trilogy, Following the Manchurian Candidate and preceding seconds, Seven Days in May contributes to a thematic exploration of paranoia and political intrigue. This trilogy showcases Frankenheimer's adeptness at weaving suspenseful narratives within the backdrop of political uncertainty, establishing him as a master of the genre. In summary, Seven Days in May not only boasts an exceptional cast, but also holds a distinctive place in history, marked by its exclusion from Brazilian theaters due to its perceived alignment with a real-life coup. As part of Frankenheimer's trilogy, the film adds another layer to the director's exploration of paranoia in political contexts. The convergence of these elements makes Seven Days in May a noteworthy entry in both cinematic and historical landscapes. General Scott's supposed Medal of Honor becomes a curious detail in the 1964 movie Seven Days in May. Despite the character's claim to this prestigious award, a keen-eyed viewer might notice its absence among his service ribbons and its unconventional placement, or rather, the lack thereof. This discrepancy raises questions about the character's military history and adds an intriguing layer to the film's portrayal of General Scott. The scene featuring Paul Girard and Admiral Barnswell aboard the S. Kitty Hawk in Gibraltar introduces another fascinating aspect. Filmed in San Diego Bay, the US Kitty Hawk, one of the newest and largest aircraft carriers in 1964, was, in reality, the flagship of the 7th Fleet in the Pacific. The US Midway, visible in the background, is now a museum in San Diego, contrasting with the decommissioned Kitty Hawk, which holds its place in the Naval Reserves. This behind-the-scenes tidbit offers a glimpse into the film's attention to military detail and its use of real-world locations. Interestingly, Spencer Tracy was initially slated for the role of the president, adding a notable what-if scenario to the film's production history. The change in casting dynamics might have altered the on-screen chemistry and the overall impact of the political drama. In essence, these subtle details, from the missing Medal of Honor to the real-world setting of naval scenes, provide a unique lens through which to examine Seven Days in May. The film's meticulous attention to military accuracy and the casting choices offer additional layers to the narrative, making it an intriguing study in cinematic history. As we bid adieu to the captivating journey through the corridors of power, and conspiracy in seven days in May, take a moment to let the echoes of this cinematic masterpiece resonate within you. This 1964 gem has not merely etched itself into the annals of film history, but has also woven threads of suspense and political intrigue that transcend time. As the credits roll, we invite you to reflect on the parallels that may exist between the gripping narrative of Seven Days in May and the complexities of our own lives. Are there moments when you felt the weight of decisions that could alter the course of your personal or professional trajectory? The film's exploration of power dynamics, loyalty, and the fragility of democracy serves as a mirror reflecting our own societal landscapes. Now, we turn the spotlight to you, dear reader, viewer. What memories does this film evoke for you? Were there scenes that etched themselves into your mind, or perhaps characters whose dilemmas lingered in your thoughts long after the screen went dark? Share your reflections, your insights, and the emotions stirred by this cinematic journey. In this communal space, let's weave a tapestry of diverse perspectives, a testament to the enduring power of storytelling. Your thoughts are the missing pieces to this cinematic puzzle, completing the narrative in a way only your unique perspective can. 
Join the conversation and let the magic of seven days in May continue to unfold in the realm of shared experiences. Thank you for embarking on this exploration with us. Your time and thoughts are treasures, enriching the collective appreciation for the artistry of film. Until next time, keep the spirit of storytelling alive.